I want to give you just one quick narration. One of the narrations from the books of the Christians or Jews. Jesus السلام, was approached by a Jewish man and he said to him, I want to accompany you on your travels. He said to him, come with me. As they traveled, Jesus السلام, he had with him three loaves of bread. Suddenly they became two. So he says to the man, where is the third loaf of bread? He says to him, I swear by Allah, there were only ever two loaves of bread. And they continued walking until they reached a blind man. Isa alayhi salam, he places his hand on the face of this blind man and asks Allah Ta'ala to restore him his vision and his vision comes back. The Jewish man, he says, Subhanallah, shocked. Jesus alayhi salam, he says, I ask you in the name of the one who restored him his vision, where is the third loaf of bread? He said, there were only two loaves of bread. No use. They continued walking until they reached a river. And he said to him, how are we gonna cross this river? Isa alayhi salam said to him, say in the name of Allah, Bismillah, and just follow me. And la ilaha illallah, by the permission of Allah Ta'ala, there they are walking on the surface of the water. Until they got to the other side, and this man, he said, SubhanAllah, we just walked on water, SubhanAllah. He says, I ask you in the name of the one who gave us permission to walk on the sea. Where is the third loaf of bread? He said, no, there were only two loaves of bread. La ilaha illallah. Here, Isa alayhi salam, he makes three, piles of soil and then he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to convert them into gold and this man is like wow mashallah who do these three piles of gold belong to he said well the first belongs to me the second belongs to you and he said the third he said the third belongs to the one who ate the third loaf of bread he said I ate the loaf of bread that was me Isa alayhi salam looks to him and says kulluhum lak all of them belong to you, take them. Isa alayhi salam, he walks away. And you imagine, this guy is just amazing, man. What have I done in my life to deserve this? Meanwhile, three horsemen, they pass by, and they see gold, and they see one man guarding it. What do they do to the man? They finish him off. Subhanallah dunya, huh? They didn't even have a moment to enjoy his wealth. Subhanallah shaitan though, he comes in and instantly starts playing about with their minds. How are you gonna get hold of all three to yourself? So one of them leans over to his friend and he says, Ya Akhi, wouldn't it be great for us to have this last pile of gold, split it in half and have half a pile extra each? He said, you know what, that's a beautiful idea. Should we get rid of him? I think we get rid of him. They said to him, brother, what do you say if you go and get us some food? We're hungry just before we set off. He said, we'll do that. He went away to buy them some food. Shaitan, he comes to him and he says, you know, it'll be lovely to have those three piles of gold to myself. So what does he do? He poisons the food. Allahu Akbar. He comes back with the food, thinking I've got these guys under control. They greet him with stabbings until he's dead. They sit down to eat the food. La ilaha illa, and they're dead. Meanwhile, Isa alayhi salam, he walks back and he sees four men lying dead on the floor and three heaps of gold untouched. And he says, Hakada taf'alu dunya bi ahliha. This is what dunya does to its people. Wallahi ya ikhwan, forgive me, yani, but when one of us will finally and eventually find himself lying on the plank of wood, being washed with lotus leaf and warm water so that they don't hurt your dead corpse. Wallahi ya ikhwan, even that gold tooth you may have in your mouth, that's gonna be removed and that's gonna be split between your inheritors. Nothing is gonna go underground with you except your hasanat and your sayyat. As can be found in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Al Mustawrid ibn Shaddad that he said alayhi salatu was salam, what is the world of this life in comparison with the hereafter except like what one of you returns from a sea after dipping his finger in the ocean and then returning. Those two drops are dunya and that ocean, that sea is al-akhirah. Ya akhi, ya ukhti, next time you're outside in the oceans and you're looking at those never-ending or seemingly everlasting shores, do this, do this. Put your finger inside and then take it back out. Look at those two drops of water, then look back into the ocean and say to yourself, really, really? Am I still finding it difficult to choose Allah Ta'ala and the hereafter over my desires and habits? Really? You're saying that those reserves and the money of this world and its women and its men and its scenery, its mountains, its treasures, its golf courses, its skyscrapers of Japan and New York are in those two drops of water? All those tears that I shed over dunya are in those two drops of water? All those times I put aside my deen for the sake of dunya are those two drops of water? So what the heck is the ocean? The ocean is the akhirah. Tell me how many drops of water are in the ocean. I can't enumerate that. That's the akhirah. Lil muttaqeen for those who are righteous. Sometimes Allah Ta'ala uses rain as an example to give you the worthlessness of dunya for me and you. He says, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا Give them an example of the worthlessness of this world. It is like rain. What about the rain, O oh Allah? 
كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض فأصبح حشيما تدروه الرياح which falls down onto the earth and then it mixes with the vegetation of the earth and then it becomes green and fresh listen listen suddenly listen to how Allah then surprises you with no introductions or preface listen فأصبح حشيما تدروه الرياح then suddenly it becomes broken to pieces dry which the wind scatters that's dunya First we had crops, we had vegetation, mashallah, dunya, wealth, business, wives, husbands, it's beautiful, yeah? Suddenly, dry, broken to pieces, which the wind scatters. What happened? Where did it go? This change, this is the dunya. Either you leave it, or either it leaves you through death. It is one or the other. Many times when this topic of dunya is addressed, there is a lot of confusion. What am I supposed to do now? I need to use dunya in some aspects. Was my time at university a waste of time? Was my house extension a bad idea? My expensive clothes, should I give them away? Am I are not allowed to make a halal earning? In fact, am I not allowed to be rich? I wanted to be rich and I wanted the Mercedes too. Is that all out of the window? That's not the correct understanding. In fact, Imam Ahmad narrates on the authority of Anas that our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, listen carefully, if one of you experiences the beginning of the day of judgment, can you imagine the horn is now being blown and qiyam is about to fall and the dunya is going to be wrapped up and he says but one of you is carrying a seed in his hand that before he's taken away if he's able to plant the seed before he's taken away let him do so and I'm just thinking la ilaha illallah what is this plant going to grow the whole universe is being rolled up now who's going to eat from the fruits of this plant oh messenger of Allah what is being said here it's being said that you need to work and forget the outcomes, that's not upon you. What is upon you is work and strive and innovate in the affairs of your dunya without a doubt. No way are these narrations in the Quran and the Sunnah which belittle the dunya inviting us to be passive and lazy or ruhban, monast, which have nothing to do with dunya as if we're some sort of amputated limbs from society. Not at all. This isn't the correct understanding. So what is the correct understanding? The criticism in the Quran and the Sunnah which is leveled at dunya, it is only focused on those aspects which pull you further away from your deen. It is only focused on those aspects of dunya which you then use as a means to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the criticism is where? It is in our actions. And this is a touchstone. Use your education as an example. If this aspect of education has taken you closer to Allah Ta'ala, the objective is to benefit the ummah, the objective is to make a halal earning, the objective is to be independent from asking, then Alhamdulillah you have done well, this is your bridge to Al-Jannah, and this is not part of the condemned dunya. However, if your education has been at the expense of your salah, if your education has been at the expense of your hijab, my sister, if your education now has been at the expense of your morality and your ethics, then ya ikhwan, know that you are engaging in that criticized and pathetic and condemned aspect of dunya. Otherwise, ya ikhwan, what else are we going to take with us to the grave? The poet, he says, the child, when he exits from the womb of his mother, his hand is tightly clasped. This is a sign, the poet says, of the natural greed and the want in the mankind. But he says, what is strange is that when that baby later dies, his hand is spread forth. This is a sign that he is saying, witness, I have left dunya with nothing. Ikhwan, what did we have before dunya? We had an infinity. After dunya, what will we have? Infinity, either in Jannah or the fire. And what is amazing is that between these two huge times, we have this little dot called dunya, 60, 70, 80 years. And it is in that middle ground where many people fall. So Ikhwan, we say just to, and my sisters, we say just to wrap up work, invent in the affairs of your dunya, innovate in the affairs of your dunya, excel in your education, whilst keeping your eyes fixed only on the hereafter, whilst keeping your main concern the grave, while keeping your main concern the bridge which you shall cross, whilst keeping the main concern in these moments, which hand am I gonna receive my books? The poet, he says, O oh, son of Adam, you left the womb of your mother and you were crying. You were crying, but what is amazing is that the people around you, they were happy and they were smiling to see you come. So work, O son of Adam, and strive, O son of Adam, for a day when you die and when people around you will be crying, you then will be happy and smiling.